There we go. It's official now. <laughs> yes. So uh, now we are recorded. And um, and we've lost your presentation. There, there we, go. we go. Oh, really? OK. No, it's Let's back. See. Good. We're good now. It's back. OK. Can you see now? Yeah. yeah. OK. So uh, let's start it. And uh, I'm super excited to start the episode number three with Juliet uh, and Steve. And uh, we want to know how did you guys manage to change your firm? So uh, a little bit of introduction for myself. Uh, I'm, I'm Jesse Bo. I'm currently the account manager for British Columbia. And uh, I'm helping all the accountants and the bookkeeper to transition their practice into paperless, which is QBOA. And uh, right now, uh, I'm interviewing all the firms, already finished all the journey, and they are on to a next level. So today, welcome to Julia and Steve. I'm very, very happy you agreed to be my guest. And uh, I'm really, really eager to know your whole journey. I know uh, I've known you for a few years, but uh, I never uh, really, really got to know the whole story from beginning to now. So today is a great opportunity for everybody to get to know your firm and what's your vision and what's the future look like. Um, so here we go. So um, now I'll pass on to Steve and Juliet, and um, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, your individual story? I remember I visited your company website. Uh, you have a Steve story and a Juliet story. Which one? <laughs> who who wants to start first? <laughs> Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, so I'll start first. Um, I guess my story, and, and the reason that we have two different stories that kind of join together um, is quite interesting. Um, in just the way that the whole the whole thing has progressed. So we only have an hour, so we're not going to you know tell you the whole 17 year journey. Um, so we've been in business for 17 years. We're located in Burlington, Ontario, just uh, just west of Toronto. Um, I started AIS Solutions. Um, started it in a in the spare room of my house um, when I was still living in Toronto, and basically started it because. I didn't like how much time my daughter was spending in daycare, that I would drop her off um, you know, at 6.30, 7 in the morning, not pick her up till 5.30, 6 at night, and I just felt like I was missing so much of these important years at the beginning. So as fate would have it, um, my company was purchased, the company that I was working for at the time was purchased by another company um, that was relocating to Houston, Texas. And um, I wasn't interested in relocating, so decided that I would venture out on my own. Um, I gave myself six months and said, you know, that let's see if, if I can make this on my own working uh, within the next six months. If not, then after six months, I'll go back and I'll pound the pavement and I'll get another job in the corporate world. So that was 17 years ago. Um, best decision I ever made. Absolutely love working for myself. Um, being in control of my own future and in control of the path that I'm taking. Um, it's certainly, you know, there's, there's obviously struggles that take place along the way. Um, as every entrepreneur knows, there's scary moments where you, you know, are wondering whether you've made the right decision, whether you had, you know, should you just quit and pack it up and go back um, and get a job. And, and even as, you know, I, I, we've been around for 17 years, but Steve will attest to, you know, like four years ago, it was, okay, let's just pack it all up and let me go back and get a job. So um, <laughs> there, there certainly are ups and downs in, in every journey and, and we've had, I think we've had them all. Um, so it was myself um, till about 2004, which is when um, I relocated to Burlington, when um, Steve and I connected and I moved to Burlington to be with Steve because he had his own business here. Um, and I couldn't convince him to move to Toronto, so I ended up moving to Burlington. Aww, um, it's and not so, that far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that far away, but it's it's a whole different lifestyle and it's a whole different culture. It was it was a huge adjustment for me to move to suburbia. She is still adjusting. I'm definitely. still adjusting because um, I love Toronto. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, when I, so basically the clients, the client base that I had in Toronto, I still maintained, I still went back and forth to Toronto, but started to develop and, and grow my practice, or I guess myself, I wouldn't really call it a practice at that point because it was just me um, locally, hooked up with some local CA firms who put me in touch with some of their clients. And that really became the stepping stone for me. Um, the services I was offering then were mostly, you know, year-end consultation, um, uh, controllership and CFO services. And I would go in and I would oversee their bookkeepers. I found that there was just so much disparity from one client to the next client to the next client as to what passed as good bookkeeping. And so decided to expand a little bit and hired some subcontractors um, who would do the bookkeeping. We, so we would go in as a team, they would do the bookkeeping and I would do the controllership services. Um, so fast forward, we used to you know, have staff meetings around my dining room table and my business was completely home-based at that point. And it was home-based until about 2010 where at Steve's insistence, we take my business to the next level um, wow. and decided to move into an office space. And so really 2010, I would say, you know, is, is the birth of AIS solutions. Before that, it was called Aurora International Services, which is what the AIS actually stands for. Um, but in 2010 is when I would say that AIS solutions was born much more to what it looks like and resembles now. So in 2010, what we did was we went to a 100% cloud-based firm. Um, we hired employees, no longer subcontractors. All of the services that we provided took place in our office. So we no longer went on site um, to clients to do the work. Back in 2010, QBO wasn't even on the radar. Um, and there really was no cloud as the term that you hear now. So we actually called it remote desktop services. We created our own terminology for it. We called it AIS cloud um, and basically invested um, a great deal of money in infrastructure and firewalls and VPN networks and through QuickBooks desktop hosted um, our clients data and offered bookkeeping services. So that was 2010 um, and fast forward now to 2017, we are a group of 12 um, we're still in Burlington. We're still 100% cloud-based, um, support only Intuit products, and QuickBooks Online is probably 95% of our client base, with the target being that by December 31st, the clients that we have on QuickBooks Desktop, if they can't or are unwilling to move to QuickBooks Online, that they will no longer be a client of ours. So we're really changing our focus and and um, I guess changing our business model so that we really are 100% QBO by December 31st. So that is my story. I will let Steve tell his story. Sure. That's quite uh, a long I'm story not sure. for I, changing from yourself, add Steve to your practice, make it fly, and then no longer take desktop clients at all. That's quite um, challenging, I think. So Steve, uh, I would like to know what secret in ingredients you add into AIS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I thank you for the assumption that I do add something um, to AIS. Uh, the, the one thing Juliet didn't tell you is, I think she said at Steve's insistence, uh, we, encouragement, we, encu Steve's encouragement uh, that we moved uh, to an office. And the primary reason for that was uh, we were looking for more balance because, as I'm sure many you know, know, when you're running a business from your home, it's very, very difficult to separate yourself from that business. And it certainly was for Juliet. Um, and so one of the main reasons why we moved to an office is so that there was a distinct place of business that was not where we were also living. So that was the primary reason for my encouragement. Yes. Uh, I, I guess before you start, we should, for the people who don't know us um, and just know us as, you know, the owners of AIS Solutions and Ninja, Steve and I are also married, which kind of adds a whole different dynamic to the... Yeah, sorry, I, I just assumed yeah. everybody knew that. Not, but... not everybody knows. So. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know, actually. I didn't, didn't know, know at all. Okay. No, I didn't know. So, first yeah. of all, I think I met Steve before I met Julia. I had a training in Mississauga office, 
about the LinkedIn social LinkedIn, media yeah. training with Steve. Yeah. And then after a few weeks later, we have our first ever official hot dog training by Jamie in our office in the fourth yeah. floor. That was uh, with um, Julia and uh, Rachel and uh, Elaine Orr, all those um, early adapters. That was yeah. our first official training. Then I met Julia. I couldn't even remember her name at the beginning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mistaken Julia with somebody else. I was, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, no worries. That was yeah, that was quite a while ago. I didn't know you guys are married until very, very, very later on. Somebody else um, told me, Oh, by the way, they are the couple. Yes, so yes. I didn't know for quite a long time. Yeah. Well and then perhaps that may explain uh even further why we needed to separate uh our personal life and our business life under yeah. two different uh Rubes. Um, so my, my background, uh, quite different from Juliet's. Um, uh, one of my passions has always been building businesses. That's what I like to do. I've always been a business owner. I mean, pretty much from the time I got out of college, I started out, I had a retail business, had that for a number of years. Uh, it was, you know, successful for me. Uh, lots of ups and downs, made lots of mistakes, learned lots of things. Um, that reached a point uh, after probably 20 plus years uh, where I got bored with it basically and I was looking for something new to do. Um, I'd also had an e-commerce business so I was also always interested in technology and online and digital marketing and so what we did is I sold the e-commerce business, gradually wound down the bricks and mortar portion of the, the business and started up a uh, digital marketing consulting business, web design, et cetera. And uh, so when we first moved into the AIS office, I was also using it on a part-time basis to do uh, the web development and digital marketing. And so, that grew, uh, was, was again, was doing reasonably well, uh, spent lots of time learning about email marketing, social media, et cetera. But as AIS also started to grow, it just became obvious that with my background being always pretty much sales and marketing, uh, that it was because there needed more energy to be put into that side of AIS because Juliet's energy was being, you know, put into just growing the operation of the business and the team and the training. And so we made a decision that I would come on board full time around 2012, I think, probably. Um, and so I joined AIS uh, full time 2012, uh, taking care of the marketing and the sales. And uh, here we are today. Wow, that's quite a journey. I think um, a lot of firms, they are struggling um, the sales and marketing part. I was uh, just talking to one of my clients uh, yesterday about um, they are middle-sized firm, but they are so busy with their own um, business. They didn't have time to go out to actually do the sales marketing by themselves. So uh, this is something I think one of the most important part of your success is that you actually take all the time and effort to do the sales and marketing to promote your firm on all different platforms and different conferences and events. I think that's very important. People um, most time just ignore the sales and marketing part. Uh, they just want to do their own work. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you really stand out for that factor to push your firm way closer and earlier to be the some of yeah. the future. I think that's what I realized uh, from my working experience so far with uh, accountant and bookkeepers for more than two and a half years now. Uh, majority of people are struggling with sales and marketing. Yeah, and I, and I think partly, you know, the struggle is it's not something they were trained to do. It's not something they particularly enjoy doing because it does require a completely different mindset. Uh, from, you know, being a great bookkeeper and quite often what makes them a great bookkeeper is what makes them not so comfortable with sales and marketing. 
Um, yeah. And uh, so it's, I mean, with our sales, with our sales and marketing, you know, I mean, yes, it's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of energy, but it also created, I think, some additional challenges for us too, um, in that, you know, if you start doing successful sales and marketing, and you start getting leads in your pipeline, and you start turning those leads into new clients, if you haven't created the infrastructure and the team and the processes and the workflows, uh, sometimes that can become a big problem. You know, and people say, well, that's a great problem to have. You know, you have too many leads and too many clients, but it's not a great problem at all because you also then have a bunch of unhappy clients. Um, so, it, you know, the road has certainly been bumpy, I would say. Uh, I mean, in the last little while, I think we've got a pretty good handle on it, but there, there was lots of times, you know, where we were bringing on, you know, three or four clients in one week and losing a client, you know, bring two on the next week and lose another one, simply because we hadn't developed the internal infrastructure to be able to deal with that. So it really is, sales and marketing is no different than in any, you know, any of the other things in business. It all has to balance in order for the business to be successful. And absolutely yes, that's it. A, and I, yeah. I agree with that completely. So before Steve was doing the sales, I was doing the sales. Um, and I hated it completely against everything that I ever wanted to do. I would avoid <laughs> sales calls. You know, people would call and I would come up with any reason. No, 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 I have to do this and this and this and this and this before I could call them back because I didn't enjoy it. So it it certainly was a big mindset shift for me to to know that okay this is where I want to take my firm I can only take my firm to this place if we grow and we can only grow if we have sales and so I forced myself completely out of my comfort zone and Steve will he's grinning over here because he knows what I went through um, not wanting to to handle any of the sales calls or talk to any of the people. Um, that, that wanted to do business with us, which again, you know, is a good problem to have, but um, not so much if you don't want to do sales. No. Yeah, that's um, not a people, like I said, everybody is uh, specialized in something. Yeah. Not everybody is good at uh, sales and marketing or don't even bother or not enjoying doing it. So I think yeah. um, you are definitely changed a whole mindset for your own experience, uh, I can tell you, you used to tell us the story about uh, you are doing the desktop, well, very comfortable, you have all the clients, and you're very happy with whatever you have. And then someday, Brad Hall, which is your account <laughs> manager, <laughs> visited you, tell you, oh, I have a manager come to see you talk about a different product called QBO. Yes, I remember like that story know? very well. Okay, would you like me to tell that story? Its story is yes, haunting me everywhere. It's a great story. Though. It's a great story. Okay, so this is probably four years ago now, maybe four and a half years ago. Um, and as Jesse said, Brad Hall is my uh, my VDM or my account rep for into it, and was for my desktop products. And he'd been trying to talk to me about QuickBooks Online, this great new thing that I needed to to look at. Um, and I told him, you know, well, we're already in the cloud. We, you know, we're happy with desktop. And so he reached out to me and said, you know, well, would you mind, um, you know, my manager's going to be in the area with me. Could we stop by and visit you and, and talk to you for a little while? And so I said, sure, no problem. Um, and out of respect for my relationship with Brad, you know, I met with his manager. And they, you know, they told me about all the exciting new things that were happening with QuickBooks Online. Um, and my understanding of QuickBooks Online, because I'm coming from the desktop world, was that the only difference between desktop and QBO was that it was cloud-based. And because we had already invested so much money in this infrastructure to take desktop to the cloud and a hosted version of it, um, I told them that there wasn't anything that I would get with QuickBooks Online that I don't already have with the environment that we've set up for our clients. Um, and I basically told them, you know, that my my team already knows QuickBooks Desktop inside and out. We've already invested so much training time in getting them to the level that they're at with QuickBooks Desktop that I wasn't prepared um, to invest any time in training them on a brand new piece of software when there was no benefit for me or my client. 
Um, and I basically spent 45 minutes telling Brad and his manager, his manager, um, <laughs> that I would never move to QBO. Um, so apparently, um, I found out later that his manager was Jeff Cates, who was the president of Intuit that was sitting in my boardroom while I told him that I would never move to this new product. Um, and also apparently never is about six months. Um, I went to QB Connect about six, six or eight months after I met with them in San Jose um, and came back and the entire focus of the firm shifted to we need to move on to QBO. I don't care what we need to do. I don't care how long it's going to take us. We need to start shifting our clients to QuickBooks Online. Um, so never say never is the is the moral of my story. Yeah, I think that was a movie too. Yeah. Never say never again. <laughs> the Bond movie, yeah. yeah that's right, movie. Sean Connery. I'm so I'm so uh, surprised our conference was was the one trigger you look into your practice moving from desktop to cloud. Lots of people take uh, like a few years or months to um, prepare for this kind of transitioning. I'm surprised uh, you did this kind of a huge decision making for your business just because you went to one of the conference. I'm definitely going to tell Brian about this. <laughs> well, I think, I think part of that reason is that we were already in the cloud through our desktop. So yeah. the shift for me wasn't as big as it is for some people. We weren't doing on-site bookkeeping, which for a lot of people, they're still doing on-site bookkeeping. So to take your clients from you're coming to their office every week and doing their bookkeeping to you're never going to see me. It's all going to be remote. It's you're, it, you know, there's nothing in your office anymore. That's a much bigger shift um, to do. And and I guess when you know when I say you know this conversation took place four years ago, we were still taking on clients who were QuickBooks Desktop. We were still taking on clients that were QBO. There wasn't it wasn't an either or. We took on both. I think more so in the last eight or ten months, um, it, the focus has been 100% QBO. That if you're desktop, that's great, and if you want to stay on desktop, that's great. It just won't be with us doing your bookkeeping. And that's a so, very conscious uh, business decision that we've made. When so you, any uh, new any new client we take either has to be on QBO or has yeah. to be willing to move to QBO. So when you have this conversation, when you have a new client coming to you, how hard was it to um, tell them the focus of your firm and uh, maybe it doesn't match? the expectation, the client thinking they are still want to do the desktop. So um, will you successfully um, change their mind for those clients at the beginning, they want to do desktop, then after a while they um, work with you, they feel like uh, QBO is a better solution for them. Was the conversation hard to um, help the client understand? Uh, I guess I'll, I'll start, start on that one. Um, Really, well, I mean, for me, the conversation is very easy because I believe it 100%. So uh, it's not a difficult conversation. Try, and honestly, I don't try to convince people. And I tell them that. Uh, it's not my job to convince you to change from one thing to another. It's my job to explain to you the advantages of this other product, QBO, and creating an ecosystem and how that can help change your life as a business owner. That if we can't create an ecosystem that saves you time, saves you money, makes you more profitable, um, they have to be open to that potential and that conversation. If they are looking for a bookkeeper or bookkeeping firm, to just do their bank reconciliations, file their HST on time, I tell them we are probably not the best fit because that is not what we do. Yes, we do all that stuff, but our role is to try and help you improve the financial data management of your business so it becomes a better business and helps you make better decisions. So that's the conversation. It's not a conversation about software. It's a conversation about their business 
and what we believe they should be considering in order to move in that direction. But obviously the decision's theirs. And some, those that, you know, uh, are just looking for someone to do their payroll, their bank recs and their HST, they're not interested. And that's perfectly fine because there's lots of people out there who are interested. Uh, you know, you can't convert the world, uh, but you can perhaps one at a time. That's a really I good think, point. I think more than anything, what we what we now have the luxury to do because of where we are in, in the stage of our business is we can be choosy about which clients we take and who we want to work with. Um, and so I think that... What I'm sorry, I disagree with Juliet on the word choosy. <laughs> Well, I, I don't want to, to create the image, you know, that we're sitting here and, you know, oh, look at those guys. They're so successful. They don't even need new clients. Okay. That's no, not no. it at all. That's not it at all. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, but, we're Please more, continue. but we're certainly more particular about who we will work with and we won't work with. Well, we're looking for people who are going to be a good long-term fit. Yeah. And we have been doing this long enough now that when we go through our sales process and our qualifying process, we have a pretty good idea whether they're going to be a long-term fit or not. And usually what we find is if we don't feel they're going to be a good long-term fit when we start with them, they're usually, they usually aren't. Um, so we've learned to trust our instincts during the sales process. Um, that if we think they're not going to be a good fit, then then let's not even start the process. Yeah, and I mean, with you know, with my background being in sales, one of the hardest things for me to do is turn away business. You know, I, I mean, yes, I, that I agree it, with it, you. It, it goes against so you know all the, yeah, it goes against all the training I've ever had in sales. Yeah. Um, but you know, the way we're doing it right now is working. So. Uh, out of a curiosity, may I ask uh, how many clients did you have when you were hosting the desktop QuickBooks versus now you are completely QBO based? I find that a really difficult que question to answer only That's because, roughly, yeah. well, not even from a, a, a number standpoint, yeah. because if you take one client who um, we had a lot more smaller clients when we were on desktop. So we had a client, you know, and who was, we were charging $150 a month. Um, we now have clients that are, you know, in the four to $5,000 a month range that we charge them. So it's still one client, but the scope of work that we do is completely different from one client to the next. So I don't like to, to say number of clients because I don't think it's a relative, it's, it's a, an accurate measure of of the size of our business. Yeah, and, and we make a conscious effort to target certain size businesses. Um, you know, like we're, we're not a good fit for startups um, and we absolutely know we are not. Um, and it, it, it really is amazing that when you really focus on something and concentrate on it, you find more of them. In other words, if we tell ourselves we're looking for, this is the type of client we're looking for, this is the mentality of the small business owner we're looking for, this is the kind of business we're looking for as a client. The funny thing is those are the kinds of businesses that suddenly start appearing before you. And it absolutely oh, works. Oh, I see. I see. So um, you find out exactly what your firm is focused, what kind of client you're looking for, and those clients will come find you. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Because, because you, you direct all of your advertising to those types of people. And those are the yep. ones that will find you. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, uh, and you know, as Steve said, we, you know, startups aren't usually a good fit for us. Um, but what we find with the startups is what we do is we set them up and do training for them. Because we do bookkeeping, but we also do QuickBooks online training. Um, and so normally what we'll do is, is um, you know, set up their QuickBooks database, walk them through it, and provide them training and support if they're looking to do it for themselves. So right now, um, what's your uh, business between uh, AIS and uh, Ninja Network? My understanding is AIS is still a full bookkeeping firm based on Absolutely. cloud. 
And the Ninja Network is more based on the support community and educational um, for other bookkeeper to learn to not get overwhelmed by all the new technology, all the apps. So um, how do you manage both? Like, uh, do you have um, a idea about uh, what the AI is going to go in the future? Uh, what's the Ninja Network going to go? Are they going to uh, eventually combine to become a one business or it's completely separate from, uh, from always? Yeah, I'll let Juliet take that. I'm smiling here because that's a conversation we probably have once a day, yeah. and uh, I'm still not <laughs> sure we have an answer yet, but go ahead, Juliet. Okay, so we started Ninja um, more out of necessity than anything else. We, we kept waiting for somebody else to create it so that we didn't have to because we needed it, um, and nobody created it for us, and so we just decided, I think we were sitting on a beach uh, in Jamaica and decided, you know, to hell with it, we're just going to start it ourselves. Um, and basically, it started out as being one of the, the biggest challenges we found was that as we were um, making this switch to QuickBooks Online and all of the new apps that were coming out, is we were struggling to keep our own team trained. And as we brought on a new team member of being able to get them up to speed quickly in um, being able to use the program and being able to be well versed and um, and efficient in the programs. So we started out purely as you know doing it for internal purposes, and then what we realized as well was that there was also a need. If it was a if it was a struggle for us, it was going to be a struggle for other people as well. And it was a, a couple of conversations that we had with people at conferences. Um, who told us, you know, that there's more than just the pain point of, of learning the technology. There's also, you know, the pain point of growing the business and how do you manage your team and how do you find the right team member and how do you create systems and processes and workflows so that as you grow, the work is done consistently across the board. And so it was, it was really the conversations from the, the colleagues of ours at the conferences that drove Ninja being expanded into the three tracks that it is now. So there's a learn track which addresses the, you know, the QBO and the apps and the ecosystems. Then there's the build track which uh, um, addresses the, the sales and marketing pain points for, for bookkeepers. And then there's the manage track which is managing your practice and managing your team and managing your workflow and being more productive. And we found that with Steve and I, I mean, we both Steve and I come with completely different skill sets, and that we've made a lot of mistakes. That if we can share those mistakes so other people don't make it, excuse me. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Juliet is recovering from a bad cold. So, um, are you, Sorry, you're, uh, you're okay. Sorry. <laughs> I feel you feel okay. <laughs> Drink some yeah. water. She'll be fine. She was um, last week. She was in Edmonton, and the the day she left, it was snowing, uh, and then wow, she arrived right? here, and it was plus twenty six. But apparently, on the flight back, she was sitting next to someone who coughed uh, the entire oh. flight, and I think uh, they shared something yeah. with her that she didn't want. So she's she's actually today was her first day back at work. So I know I feel bad. She's here she so comes. Busy. I have to drag her. Back her work okay. so hard. <laughs> My apologies. Sorry. Um, where were we? Where were we? So, so that's really the reason that we created Ninja. Yeah, it's it's yeah. to help other bookkeepers and help other bookkeepers. You know, not I mean, not every bookkeeper wants to have a firm, right? Maybe they just want to have a, a you know a small practice just for themselves. And Ninja really is designed for every bookkeeper at every level to try and help them. <clears throat> you know, become as good a bookkeeper and as good a bookkeeping practice as they want to have. Um, and because uh, we realize, you know, certainly everybody does not want a, a bookkeeping firm like ours with a team of 12, because that does come with a whole new set of challenges. Um, so we've really tried with Ninja to put uh, content and information in there that is helpful to everyone, no matter where you're at with your, your current practice. Yes. And I really uh, like your team. 
<laughs> yes, so those are pictures of our team. Um, yeah. We like to have fun at the office, as you can tell by the Halloween pictures on the right. Um, and, and I think that more than anything else is what makes us um, as successful as we've been, which is the team that's behind us, that we're only as good as our team. Um, and, and we believe that 100%. And so we try as much as possible to make the environment fun for them. I, I think there's two things, uh, you know, maybe even more than two, but two things stick out in my mind as to what have been the things that have helped us the most. And the first would certainly be our team, as Juliet says, and, the, you know, everybody probably says it, but, you know, we certainly wouldn't be here or where we are without our team. But the second thing is we have a business coach. And uh, we signed up with our business coach probably five years ago now. Um, and it was a, quite honestly, it was a considerable investment to, you know, in a good business coach. Uh, but he has been so influential in helping us get where we are today. I mean, the, the bad thing, I guess, about a business coach is they don't do the work. We still have to do the work. Um, but uh, just in how he can help guide you and uh, share ideas, give you objective feedback, um, we still work with him today. We see him uh, twice every month, and uh, he, he's become also a very good friend. But for anyone out there who is sort of sitting on the fence thinking, you know, should I get a business coach or a mentor or whatever, I highly recommend it. Uh, it, it really can change your life, not just from a business standpoint. And so that's had a huge, huge influence on us as well. Wow, that's amazing to hear. You actually have a coach at this point of your business. I consider you have a very successful practice. So I can imagine your mentor will be, um, I don't know the name of the mentor. I think maybe he's very, very good at um, planning the whole business strategy for you, for you to be more successful. Yeah, well, what he has helped us do is as we have grown over time, you know, when you go from three people to five people to seven team members to 10, each time along the way, you encounter new challenges and new problems um, that you have to adapt to and learn how to um, you know, work through them and what changes you have to make to your business. Because any business is constantly in motion. It's constantly in transition um, because nothing ever stays the same, right? I mean, the only constant is, what does they say, death and taxes? Um, it, it, so that's where he's been particularly helpful for us is he has helped us along the way to achieve the different stages and then what we needed to change within our business to deal with that particular change and plateau, if you will, and what we need to put in place to move forward again. So, Well, and I think also that's part of the reason that we started the group mentoring under Ninja was we know how important our coach has been for us over the last five years, and which, and we wanted to be able to offer that I guess the knowledge and the mistakes that we've made and the successes with with other people in the industry. Yeah. We find that and, and Ninja is targeted towards bookkeepers um, because we find or we have felt that there is so much support out there for accountants and accounting firms in growing their practices um, and not so much for the bookkeeping space. And so that's the, the, the gap that we wanted to address. And that really is the reason that we started, you know, the Ninja Mentoring Program, where it's, yeah, you know, I can tell it's very uh, overwhelmed for people to manage so many apps. You can tell from this picture, your firm, I can see that you have um, so many people, they are already early a doctor in your team. Yes. And uh, consider we have hundreds and hundreds of apps right now integrated with the KBO. Yeah. So these ones and the picture is only the major ones. I can yeah. imagine if you have a different client, they have a different combination of the workflow with different combination of the QBO and apps. I can yeah. tell, yeah, the Ninja network is helping people to solve their problem 
to looking for a solution based on the industry for what kind of apps work absolutely. for what kind of industry. Yes, absolutely. And education has always been a big part um, of who we are as a firm and and what's important to us. And I think that comes from my dad being a teacher. So it was probably instilled in me at birth. Um, but in, in within our own team, I mean, education, we always um, try and do internal training um, as much as possible when new things come out so that we can share and collaborate that if you've learned, you've worked with this app and you've made a mistake or you've learned something about it, then so that everybody doesn't make the same mistake. And so that's a, the kind of knowledge that a lot of bookkeepers who work on their own, they don't have that. Um, they don't have that resource of where do I go when, you know, I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. Um, and we, what we've also done is in this, this last summer, um, everyone who, we have two levels of, of bookkeepers in our office. So we have um, senior bookkeepers who we call our ninja warriors. And then we have junior bookkeepers who we call our junior ninjas. Um, and all of our ninja warriors are QuickBooks Advanced certified now, and all of our juniors are QuickBooks Basic certified. So we've made it very, I mean, we've made it through the through the culture of the office that education and growth for them is important all the time. Can I ask, uh, uh, what's the major industry of clients your firm is serving uh, right now? I would say that um, it's, and I'm not sure it's the majority of our clients today, but it will become the majority of our clients by uh, the end of 2018. And what we're looking for more than an, an actual vertical or a segment, um, it, it's again, it's more of a mindset of the business owner. So we're looking for, you know, a business owner who is tech savvy, uh, per, perhaps cloud friendly, that they already, you know, work in the cloud, know the cloud, that they're B2B. Uh, we find we have a much better fit with B2B than B2C. And uh, also if their business is in the cloud already, uh, that is a huge plus. But it, it, the, the main thing is the mindset of the business owner. Where do they want to take their business? Are they looking for a partner who not only looks after, you know, entering their bookkeeping data, but can help create an ecosystem for them and can help them improve the efficiencies in their business. If that's the kind of partner they're looking for, then we know they're going to be a good fit. And that's what we are looking for. And we make that very clear when we're talking to them. So that's the type of business we're looking for, uh, much more a mindset than a, an actual, you know, we're looking for landscapers, for example. I see. That's a very, very, um, I think most people um, try to find out is, do you create certain PBO plus number one, two, three apps for certain industry in your firm? Do you have that workflow already uh, created uh, when you try to mentor other people uh, in the LinkedIn network? Do they ask you to say, hey, I have this kind of a industry I serve the most, for example, some people say I do mostly lawyer's office, and other people will say I do mostly contractors, construction. Do you have this kind of workflow created in the LinkedIn network for them so they can have a, a solution before they even uh, talk to their client? We don't yet. It is on the roadmap for this fall to put up the industry-specific ones. Right now, what we've got are workflows there are so many people that are still at the, the entry level of it that we mm -hmm. want to make sure that the, the basic workflow is in place. So, for example, the HubDoc and the Pluto. So, the, the, the base level that will apply across all industries is in place um, before we do the industry-specific ones. Now, we do have them within our office, and we're, we're working to document it all. We just don't have it all done yet. I see. So one, one of I our goals, imagine. one of our goals with Ninja and one of our commitments is that we upload new content into Ninja every month. Um, we try to upload new content onto every track every month um, so that there is always something new because things are always changing. So, And more often than not, it goes up more than once a month because there is so much that's new. Yeah. Um, 
but that is our commitment is is that there is new stuff going up all the time well i'm looking forward to uh, see you have the industry specific uh workflow created in the future i would love to uh, recommend that to my clients as well <laughs> sure, sure absolutely so and and if anyone would like a demo of ninja um i mean it's very easy you just go to our website ninja.net with a k um, and then yep. right across, across the bottom of every page is schedule a demo and you can just pick yep. a calendar time and we can walk you through any of the, the tracks that you're interested in. And uh, just so if uh, people don't know, uh, both me and Julia, we are the other main in the Facebook accounting community called QBO in Quinty. So uh, this is a free community for bookkeepers and accountants who want to learn PBO and ecosystem and apps to help each other. And uh, we want to create a collaboration between the industry, different firms, so people can help each other. So if anybody would like to learn uh, at your own pace and uh, you want to know other people's experience, I think join our PBO in Quinty group will really benefit uh, everybody. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a great group. <laughs> no, it's it's a great group. It's um, a very supportive group, and um, there's a lot of us that that are on there all the time. So absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm so surprised. Uh, most of the time, people ask questions even like 10 o'clock at night, and uh, we still have people help each other to answer questions, try yeah. to find a solution or work yeah. around. And I'm really happy to see um, people support each other without saying, hey, you have to pay me this uh, $50 per hour to help you. With all the volunteers and with all the QBO users full-time day-to-day, and uh, I, will, I feel more confident, especially the weekend, our support is not open. I feel so frustrated sometimes uh, yeah. by my clients because they couldn't find anybody to help them over the weekend. So this community, uh, we are help them for sure. And um, another good news to bring up, uh, as I mentioned, our weekend support. Uh, we are still working on bring on the weekend support from Intuit. So the frustration level will be down once we have people can help you over the weekend, either by chat or email or phone. So it's coming up uh, at least uh, next year, 2018. We'll Super excited to bring this uh, weekend support, actually make it happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. Awesome. So, Are there any questions um, from your audience that we can ask, that we can answer? Yeah. So I just uh, wanna see my uh, screen. Okay, I found a very interesting part is, um, the ninja knowledge base. Oh, oh yes. So, so basically, this is the most valuable I find from your website. I just want to bring this up. <laughs> sure. So basically, this was designed um, as we, as my team would sit around and we would talk about something that we learned and we wanted to share with the team um, about what you know, what's how to do something in QBO, how to do something in Seventeen Hats, how to do something in Fathom, etc. Um, in Pluto and HubDoc. And what we found was that we started, what we first did is we created a, a cloud-based notebook that as people found things, they would just kind of, we had a notebook for each app and a notebook for QBO. We would just kind of drop our, 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 um, our findings in there so that as you wanted to, you were doing something in Pluto and you got stuck, you had a place to start. We found that it was just becoming so hard to find anything um, in these little virtual notebooks that we had created. So we decided to create a, a searchable database. I guess it's a Google for QBO and apps. Um, and again, we designed this for our own internal use and then decided to throw it on Ninja. And this is free on Ninja. It's just on the website um, under knowledge base. It's one of the main menu items and, um, and all the information is there. Um, basically it's searchable. So you can type in something and, and hopefully we have an answer for it already. That, and what we've tried to include um, in the knowledge base are things that aren't readily available if you go to the Pluto website. It doesn't give you this information about the app. Um, and, and that's the kinds of stuff that we put in there. 
And I think we've got about 230 articles in there right now, and it's growing all the time. Wow. Yeah, I just clicked earlier in the TBO session. Oh, oh good. <laughs> I, I can explain that. I think yeah. it's not a... We, we, oh, are okay. in the, we are in the middle oh, of good. transferring oh. hosting uh, because as our Ninja website has grown, the, the yeah. it is it is, we were having speed problems that the website was slowing down with our current host so we're yeah. in the middle uh, and i know it was supposed to happen friday afternoon and unfortunately it's, it's happening now. right now there you go and that's why you can't <laughs> access it so it's obviously I actually access it this morning before yeah, i get it, to this it, webinar i checked that everything was working okay yeah. so no, they, having the they, coincidence they, <laughs> Yeah, no, they just started it, I think, at about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Good timing. Uh, so I, I apologize, uh, but uh, hopefully when it's done, it is going to speed up the website and yeah. improve the performance for all of our users. So, and that was the whole idea behind it. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, uh, yeah. I really like yeah, this no, website, and um, sometimes I go find some answer by myself. I find it very useful with a lot of uh, information I cannot find anything by myself. So I use it a lot. And Good. thanks to Brad, recommend me. So uh, thank you for sharing this to public. Um, no I wouldn't get the knowledge on your website. OK, I think we are just about run time. And I have some questions coming up. And uh, so. Um, Bob asked the question, um, what does uh, AIS stand for and okay. what does Ninja stand for? Uh, how did you come up with this name? <laughs> okay, so, so AIS, um, it, when I started the business in 2000, it was actually called Aurora International Services because my first clients were in Barbados. And so I needed to be you know, bigger than I was, so I was Aurora International. And I kept that name, but it was obviously a really long name. So everybody started shortening it and calling it AIS. So when we moved in 2010 um, and rebranded everything, um, it was called AIS Solutions. And Ninja is actually an interesting story. So um, I've always called my team my Ninja Bookkeepers. And we were looking for a name for what we wanted to call this education portal. Um, and Ninja, the typical spelling, ninja.com, was the website, the URL was gone. And so we, we needed to be able to use the word ninja, so we thought, you know, well, why not put a K in front of it and make the K silent? Um, and obviously the URL was also available, which worked out perfectly. And then we found out as well that the word ninja with a K in front of it, it is an actual word in the Urban Dictionary, and it means an elite ninja. So we thought it was perfect. So um, yeah, and, and full disclosure here, Jesse, I thought at the time that the word ninja with the letter K was the worst idea I had ever heard <laughs> and that it was a terrible name that we'd always be having to explain that the K was silent and that we were crazy for doing that. Uh, but uh, Juliet persisted, even yes. though I'm the marketing person. Yeah. Um, and I'm very glad that she did because it has worked out exactly the way we hoped it would. Yeah. And uh, so, but full disclosure, Ninja was Juliet's. Uh, yes. So, so Ninja and Nina were mine. My right. idea. Right. Nina's my idea. <laughs> right. Uh, another question I says, um, are the apps growing more and more, and uh, the update? into your knowledge base uh, will be like hard to keep up. Do you find that happening uh, when we have a lot of more and more apps going to integrate with QBO, but uh, you want to keep up the knowledge in your website for uh, people to easily find a solution? Yes, absolutely. That is a challenge. Um, especially, I remember we launched in November, at the end of November at Thrive is when we launched Ninja, and then December over Christmas holidays, um, Intuit had the lovely idea of revamping all of the interface, and so we had to redo all the videos that we had up there. So yes, absolutely, it is a challenge. Um, 
what we list and, and it's in the knowledge base as well is we list the date that it was updated so that you know how current it is before you know you read it if it says it was updated september 2017 then you know it was current if it was updated um uh you know march 2017 then you may want to look and see if there is another um, update to it and what again we use all of this stuff internally so it's important for us to have it current which is why you know we need to keep it current either way and, and one of our one of our goals or hopes or wishes uh, because you know the knowledge base is public it's available to anyone we're also hoping that as it grows and as it becomes more well known that we will have app partners and perhaps other bookkeepers help us to keep it up to date because it is for the bookkeeping community it's not for us nor not just for us yes um so that is the hope but i mean ninja is less than one year old so we do have lots of plans uh but you know we can only move at uh, a certain speed so i think it's doing so well uh, another question coming up is about uh, the is there any subscription fee to uh get access to your knowledge base the answer obviously steve said is free knowledge to everybody exactly yes yeah, so the knowledge so, base yes um for ninja for the learn build and manage track it's a monthly subscription so it's 99 dollars a month for all three tracks or 33 dollars a month for one one track or two tracks which we think is very reasonable so the knowledge base is free and uh, may i ask a little bit further about uh, the paid subscription what's included that's the access to the video content and the learn module all the videos that walk you through how to do things in qbo how to do things in particular apps so for example we have an entire hub doc section which starts from you know how to set up your account how to connect it to quickbooks online um, how to publish things across and then we have um, a tips and or hints and troubleshooting um, for things that are a little bit unusual and the the um, the modules also have quizzes after each of the videos and then a quiz at the end of a, a particular section as well and then similarly on the build and manage tracks all the videos related to how to um, how to increase your digital presence, how to manage your team, how to hire your first person. That's what's included in the paid subscription. Okay, sounds good. So we are just uh, in time and uh, I was so excited to witness you in San Jose. I'm going there to meet you and witness the whole moment, take a lot of picture of your firm. And uh, I wish you all the luck to actually win the whole contest. <laughs> well, well, we'll be reaching out to you in October when the voting starts. Yes, we're going okay, to need I lots will. of help uh, <laughs> with votes because uh, yeah. they obviously competing with a firm in the U.S. It, there, it's a pretty large audience down yes. there. So, uh, so but, we'll, we'll need all the Canadians to support us. Yep. Okay, sounds good. So thank you so much again for today. I will upload the recording and uh, send it to you so you can share in your network. And okay. um, have a nice weekend. Thanks again to Thank me, my guest. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much for doing this. Thanks so much, Jesse. Thanks, bye. Bye. bye.